So this this basically is the no line where you stamp your image in such a pale colour, yeah. be it be it grey, and in this case I just did it in orange. Okay. So that when you actually add all your uh, watercolour or your pigments on top, the the line almost disappears, and Got so you. you're creating a bit like a watercolour painting. So do it in the in I guess the lightest grey that you, you yes. can get. Yes. Well, this disappear. one this one is grey, yeah. and this one I have literally just put one quick wash on, yes. and I'm going to show you how I would build up. Then I'll, I'll show you on the other one. Okay. Um, so I've got some pigment already here, um, but it's it's the easiest way to do. Um, a piece of work that would look like you've done a watercolour painting yeah. and lots of people want to be able to say oh I've done a watercolour yeah, painting absolutely. and they haven't really got the confidence but if you have some line work behind yes. you can lose that line work by then adding in um, colour. Now the reason this will take a long time is because ideally I don't want to force dry each layer. Yes, okay. I want to I want to really leave it yeah. um, and to blend. And, and what, what are you using? What kind of watercolour? Right, this is our multi-surface paint, which we've okay. got on the show, right. and we use this all the time for all our painting on fabric, on uh, grey board, um, MDF, yes. and we can use it in a di dilute form like I'm doing here, yeah. which is a watercolour style, Yes. Um, and just build and build and build and build your colour. Um, can you see what I mean about it? it's going to take yeah. a long time to yeah. show? Because you, you don't want to really force no. the, the layers in between. No. But I can see how that's coming yeah. on. And then this one, as I've been building my colour, um, so th this probably took me probably about an hour and a half to paint. Yeah. And I've slowly added. And then actually I add less water to my paint and then I go in slightly thicker. Um, and it, But it still creates that watercolour effect. And as you can see, the lines just fade into the background. So clever, isn't it? It's such and a I cool think with something technique. like this, it's not cheating at all. No. But what it does, it gives you confidence using your watercolour paints. Well, yes, and I think it is, it is a colouring technique. I mean, yes. we, we have all these mediums, pigments, pens, paints, whatever, um, and this is just another technique. Yeah. But this is also another really good illustration of why our pigments are so good, because they are cracking as, as a watercolour. Yeah, they certainly you can, are. You can just dilute them s so much, yet, you know, you can use them, like, here we go, fairly neatly if you wanted to as well. Oh, and that'll give you more, like, an, an yeah. intense... and you can build it up. It depends what sort of effect you want, but yeah. if you're particularly wanting that um, watercolour effect is what we call the, the no line. Wow, that colour is so, amazing. Yeah, so yeah. thanks to Susan. But like I say, I mean, it's just a very, very quick technique just to show you I love that. Uh, what's achievable. I love that. And, and you know, these are things that you want to achieve at home. So being able to use that technique, how wonderful is that going to be? Well, I just want to show you how beautifully this um, um, Taurus stamps onto it. I mean, I'm doing it on Bockingford here, but she's just so pretty. And she doesn't have to be tall, she doesn't have to have the horns. The horns can be um, cut off or fuss, yeah, fussy yes. cut and or masked off. Just make sure I get a nice, good, clear impression. Right, you can see how beautifully That's she... That's I mean, she's beautiful, yes. isn't she? Um, and, and I've just done that on Bockingford, just so you can see. But I've already done one in advance, which I've fussy cut out, because she is going to feature in my journal. OK. Um, and in my journal, I just before I go onto the page I'm going to work on, this was Aries that we came last month and did Aries. Yes. This I did live on TV, and um, I think it's already on YouTube. As uh, Yeah, it, Mel says it is. It's all, so if you want to go and have a look and see how it was achieved, yeah. but isn't that a beautiful double page? Absolutely. Also, it kind of looks like a superhero. Yes, you know, yeah, she, yeah, 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 she does. Absolutely, she does. Um, so this journal is going to be um, the star signs. Yep. Unfortunately, I didn't start with the first two. We're starting from Aries, but I'll add them on the end. Well, did you know that Aries was the, is the first star sign? Is it really? Yeah, it is. Oh, well, it you is. see, I, it was meant in, to in be, astrology, wasn't it? In astrology, Aries is the first star sign, and then it works. It, I think it goes back to, it's either the Chinese or the Greek calendar, but Aries is the, is the head of the, um, mm. yeah, just, just You're say. the font of all knowledge, aren't you? Certainly am, because I'm an Arian. <laughs> Just say it. <laughs> uh, right, so what I'm going to do is th this um, uh, Taurus is going to feature here. Um, I've, I've 
I haven't actually cut that out. That's actually part of the. Yeah, I was going to say that looks really effective. Yeah, of the stamp, but it looks like I've fussy cut through, but I haven't. But what I've done on this side, I'm, I'm going to cover all this out during the course of the hour. Oh, and that's the stencil, isn't it? This is the beautiful stencil, and I love this stencil wow. because one, it's got a, a middle to it, so yes. it's great for um, putting around things. That's so you can have your, your design in the centre, um, and also it's got no no sort of end to it. What so did you, you use to make that colour? Right, that colour is the. Um, what's what's it called now? That cop kettle. copper cop kettle, cop kettle. Uh, which is the Stardust powders, wow. and I put it through a, uh, the stencil using our spread it paste, which we've got on the show. And oh my the goodness! Spread it paste right. is amazing. Yeah. So the spread it paste, and I'm going to do it in a minute. But yeah. I'm just going to show you on different surfaces. Okay. Basically, um, it comes. Uh, on the show, I think we've got it in three, black, white, and clear. I'll just show that's a bit, yeah. Yeah, yes. clear. Um, and, of course, you can add your Stardust powders to all three of them, yes. including the black. Okay. Um, and the black and, and the white act as a bit of a carrier, but the end result is slightly different. Obviously, adding something to white is going to be different to black. Um, I think this one actually is pure black, and this is on, f we've used it on fabric. Gosh, um, really? Uh, oh, yes, wow. and it's got a lovely, lovely texture to it, but it also acts a bit like a mask, yeah. um, just by the nature of it. So what I've done is, is uh, put it through a stencil and then added multi-surface paint through the stencil so it colours the fabric as well. So that's one technique. Very this good. Is, this is the white, but you can see how the colour has spread through the fibres of the fabric. It's just so pretty and you get a lovely effect on the back as well. Wow. This is it on paper, and here I've added the orange, red, and the turquoise to the clear paste. And you can see it's got a really lovely oh, I like that. sheen to it. That's a really cool yeah, effect. It's so pretty, and I love that stencil. Yeah. Um, and again, just more different techniques. This is clear, um, and I'll show in a minute. We, we put the waxes on this as well. So everything that we do is all interchangeable. Yeah. So again, you could add the wax to your spread it um, yes, paste. Yeah. The, um, stardust powders to the paste, to the paste yeah. um, and it's just all, all mixes and matches. Uh, clear paste, again we can colour the paper twice. And that and will act as like a resist as well yeah. when you use it clear. Yeah, like a bit it. like when you do batik, yes. um, you can paint it on, it, it protects the surface yes. underneath. So, so here, this was a cream piece of paper, yeah. I've coloured it green, put the paste on and then added pink. Very good. So Very that's good. what it shows. And again, this is um, the uh, Stardust. Um, you can flick it onto a wet surface, so yes. you, can, you don't have to mix it with water and then use it just dilute oh, wow. like that. You can use it dry onto wet yeah. and it kind of explodes Brilliant. and, and it, it doesn't come off. Super. It's amazing. That is amazing. Yeah. And again, and that, I mean, look at that for a for a colour really for the background. Pretty. Beautiful, it's isn't so it? pretty. If you're making sections for your boxes, for example, when you're building your boxes, or maybe you've got a gift bag or a gift box that you're putting together, they would look really, really cool, wouldn't they? What I've done is I've actually stamped ahead because um, I think you all know, you know, most people know how to stamp well, but I just want to show how I compile my journal page. So I've added um, uh, our tourist lady to the black, just in stamped in black black ink onto white yeah um, but I've also stamped her again and I did her on craft card and all I do Janice is use a white gel pen to bring the highlights up and because um, I've got the craft card down this left hand side yes. of my spread I want to bring the craft card to the right hand side because I want these two pages to link up okay so I'm just going to quickly attach some of the um, uh, craft card. I love craft card. It's one of my favourite. Black craft card and actually Bockingford. I, I just, you know, there's not really really colour there. You can yeah. obviously add your colour, yeah. but it's just such a great it's combo. It's like the two staples that you need. Yeah, I think so. Um, and obviously having all your pigments and, and whatever is lovely, but sometimes it's quite nice to just restrict yourself yeah. to a few colours. I love, on craft card, I just love it when you use, if you stamp in black and then you use like a white pen. Yes, yeah, it just looks amazing, yeah, my, it's it? my favourite. Yeah. So we've just got a few little elements that I want to add on. You know, I did these a few days ago, a few days ago, and I think, yeah, I think they go along the inside ring. It's a great idea adding craft card cut out rather than, let's say, using a brown pen or a brown 
ink or a brown watercolour, yeah. you're actually using the card to bring out the colour. It's yes. a great idea. Um, but what my plan for this actual a whole double page spread is to bring this copper that we've used through the stencil. Yeah. So this was exactly the same as I did before, but I had, it wouldn't be dry in time for me yeah. to, um, to work on this page, so I've had to do it in advance. But I want to bring that copper to this page with the stardust powders and water. Yeah. So you can see that the powders um, are used in so many different ways. You know, Mel and I, we always want our, our mediums not to just do one thing. You know, and we like it to do different things and we really put them through their paces beforehand um, just to see uh, what we can use them on, what they work with. Um, and, th and that's why we love the powders because they go on pretty well everything. So, and then I just cut this little one out. Oh, that's so good. Oops, that make a difference. Yeah. And now, if this wasn't in a journal, I'd put a little gem there. Yeah, do you know what? That's a good idea. Yeah, but because it's in a journal, I like to keep them flat and I like to be able to stamp on. So You could use some of your um, texture paste you with could. your um, stardust in. You could. That would look and brilliant. And that would like a, a faux gem, wouldn't yes, it? Yes, it would. So, anyway, what we've got here is this is one of the elements on the um, Taurus. I love this stamp. It's great, isn't and it? And I want to show you something here. Um, this is this little one stamp I've used six times and oh, I've done wow. a different treatment to each one so so it's the same stamp yeah so this this is the stamp yeah on its own okay which I'm using on my I'm, I'm, I know I'm flitting but I'm just wanting to show you as I'm using it what else you can do with it so you can use it as a decorative piece here yeah. or that would I mean look at that one wouldn't that be lovely just on a how card? did you do the other bits did you just draw those on so what I did was I got my little um, uh, micro pen I know you've got micro pens on the website yeah. and I literally doodle and just go with the flow you know do I want to just carry on doing little you know curly cues all the way around well you could do or you know you could mash it up a bit let's go the opposite way let's add a little bit extra in oh this is brilliant i love watching you draw we could add some bits in that have got oh, foliage this is amazing i tell you what if you were to stamp this on fabric they'd make yeah. great buttons yes and when great this, buttons when this would be brilliant um stamped on brown paper yes. as wrapping paper absolutely and if you at the right point of your parcel if you used your stardust yep. just to do a little not over the whole lot yep. maybe just one yeah. of them oh, um, i'll tell you what if you use these on shrink plastic they'd make great earrings little oh, stud they earrings would, wouldn't, wouldn't they? they they really would um absolutely i oh, just love watching you draw i could sit here for hours whilst you're doing that we've had another email uh, hi janice kathy and mel question can the stardust powders be used on fabric if you paint on it uh, and that's from Sue. Um, if you put, were to launder, yes, you can use them on fabric, but if you actually wanted your fabric to go in the wash, yep. I would say no. Okay. The, the, the multi-surface paint, yes, but not the, the um, stardust. Okay. The multi-surface paint, okay. Um, have we got a light colour? In the multi-surface paint, I'm just thinking. We've got just, the peach. There's a peach. The peach. Quite Could light. we mix some stardust with the peach? Yes, I've not actually tried. And would that be washing? I no, don't, we know. don't I've, know. I've not tried it. So. Just a thought. You could try it at home. It was just a thought. You know, you could use the multi-surface paint as a carrier. Um, just be worth an experiment but if you're using the stardust um, on their own with some other form of carrier on fabric then it's just for decorative purposes yeah I'll, I'll um, give it a try and see yeah. what happens so but can you see how you can transform just the, the most simplest of yeah I mean, Absolutely. some are more complicated I mean that's probably the simplest yeah. one uh, that's my favorite that one I love hang that on a I, did you draw that I did the, oh, it just amazes me I, ju I ju just but that, Janice, this, this bit here is a, just a copy of that, but flipped over. Oh, you so, say that, but if I tried to do that, oh my <laughs> days, that is, a, but I see what you mean, how it is. Yeah. Just incredible. So, so coming back to these, love it. so I, I love, I just, I love that colour on the white. Yes. I think it looks just cracking. Yeah. Um, and so I've got these coming down here and I actually might, I might have some coming off and some on and then trim it off after. Yeah. So you haven't got a whole one, so it looks a bit more random. So let's glue them on. Okay. Right. It does look really good. 
just the craft card, the white, the Doesn't black, it? but then the hint of gold that you've got yes. with the stencil yeah. just kind of sets it off a little bit. But you know, you, your, your um, colour could, if you didn't want to do a metallic, you could use your um, stardust powders in the binder or just with water, any colour yes, yeah. as, as your additional one, couldn't you? Yeah. How you stick and then cut. Yeah. I would cut and then stick. Oh, but, would that would, you? but that but seeing you do this is the better way of doing it. Well I think so because when you're when you're putting you're, you're positioning them, yeah, aren't you? And if, if you'd cut it and then you realise the position was wrong. You'd get it wrong. Yeah. Of course. It's simple things like that you see yeah. make a difference. So what I want to do is this is now this is the copper and I'm gonna use it in a way that you would think, well, what's she doing that for? But it actually works. Is this really the multi surface well. paint? This is the multi surface. Ooh, can I have the copper multi surface paint spoon? We don't have that spoon. Well, actually, I can find it. Oh, no, it's okay, Mel. You don't need to. We have got it. Here Mel's Dennis. going off yeah. to, right, to, so to mix with the spoons. I kind of figured that Mel's if gone I... off to get the wooden spoon. <laughs> <laughs> um, I kind of thought that if I diluted it enough, it sort of is not far yeah. off um, like flesh, fleshy coloured, yeah, is like it? Peachy colour. Peachy colour. So I thought I'd use that just to bring in to her face. I have said spoon, it creeped in. I've, I've felt something on my hand, I was like, what's that? <laughs> um, there you go, that just shows you what the multi-surface paint, it is gorgeous. <coughs> and, and like Cathy says, you know, when you water it down, it does give you that nice um, sort of like uh, peachy tone to it. Did it make you jump, Janice? It did make me jump, <laughs> I felt this stroking on my uh, hand. That's beautiful. Very good. If you have just tuned in, hello everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Put some eyes on it, yeah. Could be spoon people but there's there's no primer on there that no. is straight onto the wood yeah that is how it's amazing good. that is yeah yeah look at that and we we did that i don't can't remember when we painted that it's probably three four five years old now do you think yeah so wow. you know that is amazing stir 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 <laughs> amazing <laughs> love that so i'm just adding a little bit of this copper it's so pale that you don't really see that it's in relation to that, but mm. actually it is. It works. Though. It does, and it's got this. Uh, you co probably can't see. It. It's got this little bit of shimmer to it, hasn't it? To her ears, because they're behind. They're yeah. behind, so I want a bit of shade. Oh, I could just watch you watercolor all night. Um, and then, so let's go and do some of these. Now this is in the multi-surface, so this is a pigment you can use on paper, you can use it on your fabric, you can use yeah. on card, um, or if you don't have the paint and you want to just go for the um, uh, powders, here's the powder. Now I always use the lid as my palette okay. and I decant just a little bit, you know, even with a wet brush into the lid and then add some water and okay. just make it into a little bit of a paste. If it dries, do you reactivate it then by adding more water yes, if it's in your lid? you yeah. can. And you know, I've wet that, but I would, as wet, I would just turn it upside down, put it in my pot, because the, the only, the worst thing that could happen is some of your powder sticks to the, to the moisture, yeah. but it doesn't matter because you're just going to reactivate it again. So we can use it as a paint and it is just brilliant to paint with. So I'm going to do a little bit of painting on this. Um, of course, remember this is the same powder that went in our paste here, yeah. so it's identical colour. So let's have a think. So she's got some sort of leafy bits coming down here, yeah. so I'm going to continue on with those. Beautiful. Even shows up really well on the black. Doesn't it? Yeah. And as it dries, it shows up even more. Yeah. Isn't that lovely? Oh, look at those little leaves. So all I'm doing here is mimicking what's there. I mean, I, I, I sometimes worry that people think, oh, you know, I don't know what to do. Actually, all the information is, is there already. Yeah. Um, if you just look and see and then just copy. And it's all mark making. And what I like about this one, we've actually got, this is part of the stamp. You see all these sort of dots and stars mm. that I'll try and use in. I'll use, I'm trying to use this um, stardust, not the paint. Let's go back to the stardust. Um, yeah, you can use that as, as well, the, the actual stamp, if you're not confident to just make marks. Yeah, beautiful, isn't it? So many different ways that you can use the stardust. Uh, and it really does give you that lovely shimmer as well. 
Is this showing up on the camera well enough? Yeah, it is. is yeah, it? Am I doing yeah, it we can big see enough? That. Yeah, we can see that. Even if you add just a, a, a tiny amount, it gives you that detail. Just using a tiny brush like that, you can see just how smooth. And this is just water and the stardust mixed. Yeah, we quite often get um, questions like, uh, what size brush do you use? I mean, I, I, I generally have about two, one about this size and a bigger one. Yeah. Um, bigger one for doing washes and this for doing fine. But actually, um, as long as your brush has got a really, really good point, yeah. it can be a big brush with a really lovely point, you can still do fine work with it. Yeah. So again, we've got all these little leaves, I can start... Um, Colouring in. Yeah. Adding Beautiful. them in. Whoops. Again, this is this is Taurus from your astrology set, but doesn't have to be a star sign. This could be a mythical um, stamp. It could be something. If you take if you take the horns off, for example, um, it can be something completely different. So now I'm bringing in the gel pen, and I don't know what what. Time's looking like. Have I got time wise? Less than five minutes on the show. Oh gosh. I know time right. flies, doesn't My it? My plan for this piece is yep. I'm going to doodle with the gel pen and carry on with the stardust. Yes. And the shapes I'm making this side, I'm going to bring across and then do the same this side and they're going to meet. Oh. So, so there's a really good synergy between. Can you see I've started doodling on there already? Got you. So all these sort of like um, doodle parts are going to yeah. meet in the middle. Wow. Yeah. Um, and then that connects the two pages. So it's, it's a bit like the Aries. Yes. That one pa is not. A, it doesn't work you, as yeah. separate pages. That they actually belong together yeah. by the colour. Sort of, uh, you know, oh, some I of the that. some of the mark making. And I should do the same with this. And Can, imagine if this is your calendar. It would you be know, beautiful, wouldn't, wouldn't that it? Wouldn't that be absolutely stunning to make somebody a calendar with all of those star signs on? It really, really would with all these different style designs. Or even a book, you know, and, you know, if you do your research or if you know your astrology, you could take and pick the different characteristics of the different star signs and you could print those and you could put those into the book as well. I think that would make a really great gift for somebody. I think so. I think that's a lovely idea. Yeah.